kicked out a couple people. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through what we've done so far in this workbook. So here we go. So we've gone over the elements of art, and we did it on the previous page over here, which is great. And then if we flip it, we went over the principles of design as well. So here we go. The pattern, the emphasis, variety, unity and balance, rhythm, movement, and proportion. Now, next page. This next page is called value. You don't need to worry about this stuff right here. That was from last class. Let's just talk about this page right here. So again, if you don't have this workbook, it is possible for you guys to do it on a blank sheet of paper, like how I did over here from last class. So if you don't have this workbook, what I want you guys to do is write down the word value on your blank sheet of paper. And I want you guys to draw four rectangular boxes so you guys can participate still. All right. There we go. Right, make sure you guys have your microphones muted. There is about two people that still have their microphones on. So make sure you guys keep those uh, off for right now, unless you guys have a question. All right, so again, if you don't have the workbook, uh, just have a blank sheet of paper and draw four rectangles so we can get started. Hey, Gabriel. All right, step number one, let's read off what value is about. Here we go. So value is the difference in the lightness or darkness of an object, shape, or form. So if we skip down to this section right here, I'm going to tell you guys what these examples are for. The first one is a pot, and this is going to be an example for a pencil value scale. The next one, this cube, will be an example for hatching. The cylinder will be an example of cross hatching. And these last three are great examples of something called stippling. Stippling is basically the art of doing with just dots when it comes to shading. So that's why they have three examples, just in case if you guys are having a hard time understanding how stippling works. All right. So again, like I said, uh, you're going to need something to write with. Uh, so if you have a pen, great. If you have a pencil, great too. Or crayon, which I did over here for this first one. But this is done in crayon. That's fine too. So all you do, I want you guys to work from dark to light. So going from the top, which is the dark, and light as we go down. So the first rectangle will be a pencil value scale. So what we're going to do, we're going to go inside, we're going to press decently hard, and we're going to kind of go back and forth, back and forth. And as we go to, you want to aim for the middle. As we go to the middle, you're going to press lighter and lighter and lighter so you have a nice and even gradient of gray. And again, if you don't have a pencil, this might work with pen, and it'll definitely work with crayon because I did it in crayon earlier. There we go. Once you reach the middle point, you're going to go from mid gray to super light. So we're going to press even lighter as you go down. So basically, as by the time you reach the bottom, you should be barely pressing the pencil onto the paper, just like so. All right. You might have to go back and fix it a little bit. So I have to go back, press it a little bit harder on some spots. And maybe on the very top, maybe I should press super hard. There we go. That way, it's nice and even. There we go. All right, in these next examples, they did divide the sections up for pen versus pencil. Um, you don't have to in my book. If you guys want to fill in the whole entire thing with either pencil or pen or marker, you can. So this is possible with marker as well, as you can see on these two examples in the middle right there. So marker is possible for this project. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it in uh, crayon, actually. I'll do it in red orange. So the, this next one is called hatching. It's when you're shading with just plain lines. So I'm going to go uh, just horizontal. So the idea is to make your lines get super close together. So the lines are super close together. And then as you go further down, the lines get further and further spaced out, kind of like that. OK? So it's not as great as a pencil value scale like this, but hatching has to deal with lines. So that's what you see over here. The next one is called cross hatching. Uh, I think I have a pen somewhere. Let me find a pen. Yep, I got a pen. So let me try to do my best in pen. Cross hatching is basically the same exact idea with hatching, 
but you're going to kind of like cross them together. So here's some lines, and they're super close together. And as I go down, as I go down, they're going to get further and further apart, just like that. There we go. So that's just normal hatching. What you're going to do for cross hatching is now go the opposite way. Maybe I'll go from this corner instead. So super close lines together first. And then as I go lower, the lines get further and further apart from each other. So it's like that. So again, here's my uh, example from last class. Notice how it goes from light to dark. And then here's my example from your class. Going from light to dark. All right, the next one is called stippling. Stippling is basically the art of shading with dots or drawing with dots. So you guys probably understand what the concept is. And I found that it's a lot easier if you do it in marker. So that's what I'm gonna do. So the idea is to make sure that the dots are really close together at first. And then as you get lower on the page or lower on the rectangle, the dots get further and further apart. And that's called stippling. That is called stippling. All right, so that's the middle. I'm gonna try to go lower. The dots further and further apart, there you go. So I need to add more dots on the top to make it look more like it's kind of fading. There you go. All right, that's the best I can do with how, how much it fades. All right. I understand if you're kind of far behind, that's fine. All right, we have six minutes left. I'm just going to take a peek at the next page just to see what we're going to do next time. All right, it looks like we're going to be working on symmetrical and asymmetrical and radial. That's for next week. But this week is just value. Now, if you're done, if you would like, what I told the last class to do was to create a shape of their choice or a basic shape. So I did circles. And then using my technique of value of each of them on all of them. So they turned out to look like spheres. So this one's the normal pencil value scale done in crayon. This one's hatching, this one's cross hatching, and this one's stippling. So that's what you could do on that reverse page right there. All right, and that's the end of this class. We still have five minutes, so that's plenty of time for you guys to catch up and finish this page and also work on this back page right here. Um, you don't have to do these uh, apple or pumpkins over here, but if you want to do price on these, you can. I just find them to be super small for what we're doing. So that's why I ask kids to do it on this side instead or on a blank sheet of paper. So I'll put this on your screen. That way it's a little bit easier to see. There you go. So now you have a bunch of examples on your screen as well. There we go. A lot of examples here. I'll give you guys maybe a minute or two, and then we'll say our goodbyes in a little bit. I see a lot of people working right now. And again, if you don't have the workbook or you don't have access to paper, I understand, and that's fine. All right. While you guys keep working, I'm going to flip my camera in a little bit. I know some people are still looking off of it. But yeah, I'm excited for the next page. The next page is symmetry, asymmetry, and radial. I taught you guys symmetry before with the uh, bugs and stuff in second grade. I don't think I taught you guys the radial one yet. The radial one's pretty fun.
All right, we got three minutes left to go. I think that's a perfect amount of time for me to turn my camera around and stop recording a little bit. All right. All right, let me make sure I turn off my recording so it goes to the correct person. Uh-oh. Mr. Rick, it's going to go to your folder, apparently. 